Greetings and welcome back. Previous lecture was the solution to the assignment that was taking this hunger variable and wiring it up so it updates the text as well. Now we're going to see how to quickly start repackaging our, our game or refactoring it so that we don't end up with graphs that just are huge and take up a ton of space on the screen. As you can see, if we have our money that needs to get updated up here, and then eventually we're going to have lodging, we're going to have your job, uh, we're going to have things like that, and your education. At least those three things uh, you would build out in a full bolt or full life simulator game. And we're going to have a whole bunch of other things that we're going to have to check for. So these graphs would get really complex if you had to put them in one place. So let's see how we can take this whole piece here and make it so that when this starts up, we don't have to see this complex graph. And the way I usually do this is I would select all the things I need to put into a you know more modular way of running them. So I'm going to take all these items right here and I'm going to right click and say copy. So I got a copy of them. Then I'll click here, right click and say add unit super unit and pick super unit here. Now this allows us to take these graphs and nest them inside each other. So when I double click on super unit here, I have a whole nother graph nested inside and you can see this over here on the left that we have this uh, basically tab interface that can show us uh, like with breadcrumbs going into the nested units. So now I'm inside this super unit, I can paste all of these that I did before. So this graph, I'm reusing it by pasting in here. I don't have to rebuild it. And I can move my output over here and my input here. Now, right now, the input doesn't have any labels on it. I always kind of wonder, hey, wouldn't it be kind of neat if you could set up a default here? Because I almost always need an in. And I can just label it in. You can have a key, whatever you want here, but Basically, I just need it to say in to show that this is where we come in the graph. And then I just bring it and drag it right over here to the text, the set. So some of the thing that might be confusing is where you wire up the flows. And they're always going to be lined up with these green arrows. And the flow graph bolt engine is smart enough to know that in order to satisfy setting this text, it like looks backwards and says, okay, I need to get whatever comes in on this input. So it finds it needs to get this to string and then it finds here and looks through this flow to get the hell. So this is gets kind of pulled in to this unit. It gets processed. Now the flow comes to here. So then it's going to tell it to flow into there. And so this input in just gets the flow started into this nested flow graph and it's going to process this whole thing. We actually don't need an output. So I'm going to come back here to game manager and from this start I can just go right into the super unit and I'll just zoom out and delete all of these others and that's all we have now. And I can come over here and I can say update health and hunger like that and when I run it we have the exact same result that we had when it was all out here in our primary game manager graph works exactly the same but now we've taken all that complexity and nested it down inside this super unit pretty neat huh okay so now let's jump in and see how we can have a button that will update these so I'm gonna right click on my canvas here I'm gonna come down to UI and choose button right here and I'll just line it under this a little bit for now and let's go ahead and start with eating first so now these games are you know they're humorous and so we'll just call this I'm actually gonna call it action button because later we're gonna turn this into all kinds of different buttons that can be eating and working at jobs and buying things and all kinds of things like that but for now we're just gonna implement a simple example basically for how we can update our variables I'm gonna come into our button here and you'll notice that here's the button and it has the text nested in the button so I had to open that up to get to the text in there and I'm just gonna come in here and say 
eat garbage. Like I said, these uh, life simulator games are humorous. So you always start your life simulator games out being very poor, broke, and um, in this case, we're in this example eating garbage. And so when we do that, we want our hunger to go up by like three, and, but we want our health to go down. So as you're eating this stuff, it helps your hunger, but it hurts your health. And likewise, I'll go ahead and duplicate this so we can see how another one would work. We won't hook it up yet, but this one might be sleep uh, on the streets. And so I'll just come down here to text and say sleep on the street. And so in this case, when this one's implemented, this one is going to put your health up by three, but your hunger is going to drop. So you get hungry while you're sleeping and your health goes down as you're eating. So that's the kind of the general gameplay that you'll see in Homeless and some of these other life simulator games. So now the question is, okay, how do I get my eat garbage button so that I can basically click on it and affect these values? And Bolt makes it pretty easy. I can just drag this into our flow graph and you'll see that it shows this action button there and let go. And once again, we're given our components, and you can see that button is a component here. And if I could select down through here, and you'll see the on click. I found it better to type on click up here and actually find on button click. So this is important to make sure you get the right event. And it's, see what it says right down there. Called when a user clicks the button and releases it. So it's really simple. You just pick it like that. And just like this, anytime somebody clicks this button, this is going to fire off, just like with the start here. But now in this case, let's go ahead and make it update our one of our variables. And let's just pick one of them. And since we're eating, let's pick that one. So I can come over here to our scene variables and then I come up here to our hunger and just drag it off right into here. Now remember it is a little bit of an error here that it makes it an object variable because really these are scene variables. So you have to make sure that that you pick scene as the scene variable here because it really it's an object variable for itself but when this thing's actually running, it's running here on the game manager. So that's why it doesn't work if this is object. It needs to be seen. Now, this is going to get the variable. Now we need to modify it. And the way we would do that, if I right click and say add units, is, and I can just type add. And you can see that we have in math generic add. And so I can pick this, and you can see the perfect you know easy way it works you get an a in up here and you get b here and the result that comes out this side is a plus b so it's really straightforward so we know that we want a to be our hunger right just like that and then we know that b in this case if i click and drag it off we can just hard code it for now by hard coded, I mean that we're going to actually type in a literal, this integer here, so I can pick int and put in 3 here. So it's just like we did um, when we pushed the string into the text one, you know, property in the other lecture. In this case, we're pushing the integer 3 into this add. So it's going to take whatever hunger is, it's going to add 3 to it, and that's going to come out the other side. Well, now we know that we want to set a variable here, uh, the scene variable. I'm going to show you how you can do that just in the graph. So if I right click and say add unit, I can just type in here hunger. And the smart search is knows that, that we're talking about our hunger variable. So it puts both of these right at the top. And of course, we want to set hunger. And at this point, we want to drag the A and the B into the green, like so. And then we need to have the button the flow part come in here to the set variable because as we had said the set is what drives the action or the the flow this pu gets pulled these get pulled into the set so there's our flow variable for setting hunger 
Now what we can do is we can come right out of there into this. So this is gonna, when we click the button, set the variable hunger to the whatever it is, plus add on three. Just like that. So there's our entire flow. And let's run it. And say garbage. And you'll see hunger going up by three. And look at our graph work now. So now we can actually see some things that's kind of neat about Bolt. When I hit the eat garbage, notice that we can see the button fire off here. We can see the hunger go from 59 coming in here and the three coming in here. And when they're added together, it comes out to 62. And it's in real time. You can actually see the data flowing through it. And if I come in here, I can watch the variables flow through this graph as well. So now we're just updating hunger. In the next set of lectures, you're going to have an assignment. And we'll see. You're going to have to do the same thing for health.